Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office for this Friday, August the 18th, 2023. In today's update, we are keeping an eye on Major Hurricane Hillary as it moves towards the north-northwest at about 15 miles an hour. What could the impacts be for Southern California and Baja California? We could be looking at historic impacts. So to start things off, here's a look at the latest mesofloater satellite imagery provided by the College Ado page. There will be a link in the description below this video. And we can see a very, very powerful Hurricane Hillary here swirling like crazy with a well-defined eye in some sense. We can see where the eye actually is here. But what we're starting to see is some structure changes that might be beginning, and they have been the case since last night. We can see that the eye is not very solid with very deep convection surrounding the entire eye. It's more kind of broken up. We might see a little bit of a breakup with the southwestern eye wall on this imagery with the northern and eastern eye walls very well intact at the moment. But also, when we look at the imagery here, we're not seeing a whole lot of dry air towards the northwest of the system. There is some, but not enough to cause some outflow boundaries here. Instead, we're beginning to see a little, little bit of hints of shear that will soon encroach onto the system. See these clouds here? They're kind of being... Um, pushed in one direction when they develop the kind of the the remnants of those clouds are just kind of being um, pulled apart by that shear and so we do have increasing shear to the north and northwest of the system which might help to kind of weaken um hillary a little quicker than what was probably previously forecasted also, I am beginning to notice a little bit of some drier air encroaching onto the southern side of the system. We'll see if this kind of gets into the center and actually um, causes some weakening over the course of the next, say, 12 to 24 hours. When we take a look at the latest, um, this is a microwave imagery pass provided by um, the Navy uh, or the Novel website. And we can get an idea that there is possibly uh, a secondary eye wall trying to form here. We can see a little bit of deep convection here, a little bit of deeper convection here. If this is able to um, connect and rob out the inner eye wall, this could forebode a um, ERC or an eye wall replacement cycle. But as it stands now, it does appear that most or at least the northern and eastern portion of the eye wall is very strong, generating very vigorous convection. And we can see that from the latest recon mission that flew through the system. This is actually, they have just got done with their mission. They're flying out now, headed back um, to Los Angeles, I'm sure, or flying somewhere else. And they flew in this general direction and they did find winds that are about 125 or so miles an hour i'm a little skeptical on the 145 miles an hour that the nhc did indicate it's probably weaker than that but it really doesn't matter on how strong or how weak hillary is hillary is a very intense large hurricane with hurricane force winds that are pretty some distance away from the center i mean this is potentially the estimation of the hurricane wind field has been noted from the recon aircraft again the purple here indicates hurricane force winds while the red and orange colors usually indicate even yellows um, show tropical storm force winds so at the moment even so hurricane hillary might have weakened this is a very powerful potentially a life-threatening situation unfolding for southern california even so, it may not be a hurricane, or if it's a hurricane, it won't matter at all, folks. This is a very, very life-threatening situation that needs to be taken really, really seriously. And I don't like hyping up stuff, but I mean this, for one thing, this could be historic on many levels. We'll get into that in a second. And second of all, this is going to produce some um, copious amounts of rainfall. In, in fact, let alone in August, we don't even see rainfall amounts at 10 inches or even 15 inches in some areas. We could see those rainfall totals out of Hurricane Hillary um, as it um, kind of decays and a lot of that moisture remains. 
So looking at the latest GFS 12Z um, output here, and this is the latest run from the global forecasting system. We go forward, uh, we have that moisture that is going to be encroaching into Southern California and Southwestern Arizona, including for Southern Nevada. Not to mention some of that moisture might even arrive into the Sierras by um, Saturday afternoon, so generating some thunderstorms. And some of these rain amounts here could be quite, or rain rates, can be impressive anywhere between about uh, maybe a half an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch an hour. If we go forward all the way into um, Sunday night, yeah, this is really, really concerning. Very intense rainfall rates, strong winds that could blow down trees and power lines. We can see wind gusts between 45 and 65 miles an hour. In fact, some of the, the favorite areas like the Banning area, which is uh, very close. If you go, so if you go uh, north of Palm Springs and then you take I-10 through Banning, that little passage, we could see wind gusts there over 75 miles an hour. Um, even so, maybe some areas may only have gusts up to maybe 15 or 25 miles an hour. These windy favored areas could have some pretty serious damaging winds along to go with the heavy rainfall that comes with this system. Then by, uh, looks like by Sunday night into Monday is when I think the heaviest rain will arrive over LA. The models have been pretty consistent with the overall timing and track of this. So we have a pretty good idea now when this is going to arrive in Southern California. And it seems to be now overnight Sunday into early Monday when we can see some rainfall rates here approaching one and a half to even almost two inches an hour on top of very strong winds, lightning strikes, mudslides, debris flows. Again, I don't like saying this, but this could truly be a historic event, um, folks. This is to be taken really seriously. Again, it doesn't matter of how strong or how weak the system is. This is going to produce a lot of water uh, from, or a lot of water is going to fall from the sky and accumulate uh, very quickly at ground level. So looking at the 12Z NAM model, where we haven't had the 18Z out yet, so we can give you the latest information here based on what I found. And I mean, some of the uh, mountains here could get uh, four inches of rainfall. Look at uh, near Death Valley here could get maybe six to eight inches of rainfall. Uh, some of the mountains here, uh, say near Palm Springs, Cathedral City in southeastern California could get as much as seven to even nine inches of rainfall. I've seen some isolated areas that could get 10 to even 12 inches of rain. And again, this is going to come within a 24 to 36 hour period, which again will certainly certainly lead to some life-threatening flooding, uh, maybe some road washouts, river, small creek, stream flooding. I mean, this is a really big deal um, for California standards. And some of you were saying, Dude, come on. This is not going to be a big deal. It's only going to be a tropical storm or a tropical depression. Like I said, it really doesn't matter of the winds here. It, 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 it comes down uh, to how much rainfall we're going to get because, you know, this the, the moisture influx with this is pretty enormous. And actually, when we go and uh, go back and look at the Call of Dew page here, and we go out and look at preceptible water imagery on the NAM. I mean, look at the water amounts here that are vected in into, say, uh, Southern California, like Palm Springs, almost three inches of PWAP values. These are historic amounts by all levels. And when we look at the GFS model, which is another model that I like to look at, I mean, these water uh, amounts, perceptible water or PWATs, are exceeding two and a half inches in many areas. And again, with orographic lifting, with a lot of forcing over the mountain ranges, we're going to be talking uh, big time rainfall and flood problems. All right, the GFS model. Now, what's the steering influence? I'm going to, we have a pretty good idea, but I want to make it clear with where what's going to make this go north and what is not going to allow it to go any further west? Well, a simple way to put it, um, this is our steering flow map at 500 millibars from the GFS model. Vorticity is in, um, is in color. This is our deep layer ridge that is in place over the Midwest. We have been talking about how this ridge is critical for the storm's motion over the next couple of days and how this trough off the central California coast will greatly influence 
on how um, Hillary, where the escape or where the alleyway where Hillary can escape to uh, based on the edge of this ridge. And when we go forward, uh, we can see how this trough here is not only is it kind of small in some areas, but it's it's a pretty good size here. And so there's going to be an edge to where this ridge is. And it's right in here is where we have the our first close contour of the 500 millibar chart of the heights or the thicknesses. And so when we have Hillary right here, it's going to be able to escape um, right over, say, San Diego, probably just to the east of that. And we have some pretty good consistency among the models today on clearly how consistent and a pretty good idea with what we have to work with. So this is um, a look at the latest hurricane models, pretty tightly clustered with this steering evolution um, within the still in reach of, say, Long Beach and Los Angeles. But uh, again, this could shift still off to the west a little bit. Um, that That is still... The never-ending possibility, and it, again, it all depends on um, how far west can Hillary get or how strong or how weak will it get before it reaches. There's a lot of competing influences here on exactly who is going to get the center, but at the moment or at this time, it really doesn't matter who gets the center. There's going to be some very intense rainfall, strong winds that will spread well away from the center, and the fact that it's hitting California in itself is it, that is pretty concerning. So looking now at the Euro Ensemble forecast, this is from the 06Z output. Another way we can see on what the possible outcomes could be. Uh, this is pretty wide, uh, probably unusually um, uh, wide at this time, and probably not as accurate as the GFS ensembles and the hurricane models. Um, so probably right in this area is where I think we're going to have a landfall, all right? And again, landfall at this point doesn't matter. Uh, impacts will spread well away from the center. Now, if you guys were wondering how rare is it for a tropical storm or hurricane to hit California, let alone. Well, in the last 100 years in Long Beach, in 1939, a tropical storm made landfall in California. And I think that was Darley or something. I don't know. I got to figure that out or I got to do more research on it. But either way, it's it's been since 1939 since California has been hit and struck by a tropical storm of any kind in the last century which makes this extremely rare and historic. So here's a look at the latest on Hurricane Hillary. This is the 12 o'clock Mountain Daylight Time update from the National Hurricane Center. It is at a 145 Category 4 hurricane with pressures down to 939 millibars. We saw the recon data, probably a little weaker than that, more like maybe 125 or 130 miles an hour or so. I don't think it's... Uh, it's 145, but again, that's based on the recon aircraft. We'll probably get more estimates or more better um, data in in a little while, but anywhere between maybe 125 to maybe 130 may, or 135 is certainly um, a more likelihood at this point. But again, intensity doesn't matter. We don't care about intensity. We care about impacts, and the rain is an impact. So therefore, the National Hurricane Center has issued a tropical storm watch for Southern California, which again is once in a uh, once in a lifetime, once in a hundred years that occurs. Hurricane watches have been issued for Baja California, including hurricane warnings. This is a historic event by all standards. It is moving to the northwest at 10 miles an hour, and the probability or most likely time for tropical storm force winds would be Sunday night across Southern California. At That's at 8 p.m. local time if you're following me in California, and there is a 40 to 50 percent chance that you could have tropical storm force winds um, with this system, and again, winds or not, the rain is going to be a big factor in all of this. And we looked at the model to prove you my point on how life-threatening this could become. 
All right, so the key points, and I, I, I we got to read this, okay? There, this is very important data. I know you hate when I read. It's probably boring. It's like, come on, David, come on. Just kind of move along with it. All right, the first point I want to make here is heavy rainfall associated with Hillary could produce areas of flash flooding and result in landslides over portions of Baja California Peninsula late tonight through Sunday. Rainfall impacts from Hillary within the southwestern United States are expected to peak this weekend into Monday. Flash urban and uh, areo flooding or aerial flooding is expected with the potential for rare and dangerous impacts. Yeah, rare. Okay, that's from the NHC. Rare means historic. Okay, point number two, hurricane conditions are expected within portions of the hurricane warning area along the west central coast of Baja California Peninsula on Sunday and are possible in the hurricane watch area. Tropical storm conditions are possible on Sunday in portions of Southern California where a tropical storm watch has been issued. Large swells from Hillary will spread northward along the coast of southwestern Mexico and Baja California Peninsula. These swells will reach the Gulf of California and northern portions of Baja California Peninsula later this weekend. So again, more information, you can go to hurricanes.gov. There will be a link in the description. Uh, that's a look at the thumbnail that we're about to visit in just a second. But look at the rain. I mean, boy, big time. So speaking of rain, um, there is now a rare, this is a very rare event, a rare high risk of significant flooding for portions uh, east of San Diego. This includes for Palm Springs. This includes for um, Joshua Tree National Park. If you, fall, if you know where that is, that's near Palm Springs, under a rare high risk. I mean, a 70% chance that there will be some significant flooding Las Vegas, uh, Barstow, Needle, Death Valley are under a moderate risk for flash flooding. Yuma under a moderate risk. Um, if you're in Fresno, even, I'll just say Fresno because that's very close, under a slight risk for flash flooding. Bakersfield under a slight risk for flash flooding. Reno under a slight risk. Winnemucca, Ely, uh, Cedar City. Uh, this is... Big time. Uh, Phoenix, Tucson, very populated areas under a marginal to slight risk for flash flooding. Not only that, I mean, come on. There is a marginal risk, a 5% chance at Red Bluff and even perhaps portions of the Bay Area are under a marginal risk. So this is impacting a lot of people. This is not just in the middle of nowhere. This is impacting potentially over 150 million people. So this is I mean, this is really, really something we do not see and, again, makes history. All right. Okay, so now before I do in the video, I want to make some uh, very important special announcements with you all. All I got to say is I just pray and pray to the Lord that you guys are going to be safe. Um, get out of harm's way if you can. If you're in San Diego, if you're in, um, say, uh, Santa Ana, if you're in... Uh, Rancho, uh, uh, yeah, no, I forgot the second name of that, but San Bernardino, if you're in, uh, banning, just, I, I was raised in Southern California and I'm telling you those mountains are steep. And if you get a lot of rain, this, I mean, this has the potential folks of causing life threatening impacts. People could die out of this. And I don't like using that word. Even so it's a tropical depression or a tropical storm or a hurricane, it does not matter. Rain, maybe some high surf, maybe some coastal flooding, coastal impacts are a impact. It's not just the wind. People think that the wind is only the only thing you get. The moisture is going to be historic. This, again, is, I'm sure there's going to be fatalities, and I don't like predicting things like this, but I'm telling you, I'm sure a lot of people are, on, are not ready or prepared for this, and I just hope you all can please get out of harm's way. My job here on YouTube is making sure you all are prepared for what's to come because, I mean, this is my state. I live in California. Uh, this is going to clip my area. We could get some rain out of this. Not as bad as Southern California, but I mean, literally, 
I've been here for 27 years, and I'll tell you, I've never seen anything this significant in my entire life. And I've been around on Earth here for 27 years, since November the 15th of 1995, if that makes that any more better. So I hope this video helped you out a lot. If it did, please consider sharing this, subscribing, and hitting that like button. Because again, at the end of the day, I'm here to provide you the best, most accurate weather information as I can possible.